Hello, everybody. We're live. It's my music. It's Graham Cave here. It's my favourite time of the day. It's nearly lunchtime. Um, and it's uh, going to be my pleasure to talk to Christian Hurst in a minute. But first, we're going to have this. I need to get going, Mel. See you later. There we go. We've we've done that. We've done that. <laughs> there we are. We've we've done all that that bit. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. We, we, this took a while for us to to organise and get here. It's been a weird year, <laughs> hasn't it? You're you're a, you're a very busy person. I'm a very busy person as well. Um, but and you've just been incredibly busy because yeah. I, don't, I don't think you've stopped, have you? No, I think mostly because they stabbed me. They, you know, most people who lost their jobs in the pandemic didn't lose the whole concept of their job. <laughs> <laughs> Us musicians were erased in a moment. And I played up until I think my last show was Valentine's Day in Chicago. That's right before they shut us all down. So I, I, I played it well without having any idea what was going to happen. But um my problem solving was just to throw myself into a book and some records and so yeah i've been a little bit buried that way with my three entities and uh two books but um hi yeah. <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> well no no i don't mind because i like reading your books and listening to your music so oh that's, that's very nice of you <laughs> that, that's that's not a problem at all it's actually it's quite interesting i did a I did a post on LinkedIn recently um, and people said, oh, are there musicians that can actually write then? I said, yeah, yeah, there are. <laughs> Surprising that. I get that too. I don't think they want actual writing. They want you to name drop and I think be kind of nasty. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really nice. And in fact, my last book, had no names in it because I so disagree with the concept of one name being bigger than another and one person being more important than another. And uh, so that can be very disappointing, which I consider a win. I like to disappoint people. Oh, is that, is that <laughs> what, is that why you sort of stuck with sort of pronouns for people rather than actual names? Yes. I, I, yeah. It makes the, it made the book ugly. And uh, I was asked to write a book about, raising four kids on a tour bus, you know, raising four kids in my lifestyle, in other words. And uh, my response initially was, I love kids and I love buses, but you've met both, right? They're not <laughs> engaging every moment. I don't know if that I could really pull off a whole book about it. And then uh, my editor said, well, I'm hoping the book starts right where Rap Girl or Paradoxical and Dressing left mm. off. This will end as your baby son turns 18. And so your life will be reflective of the trajectory of the book. And that just sounded cruel. I was like, so mean. <laughs> it's like I'm already facing empty nest. And then I'm going to let the baby and the book go at the same time and 30 years. My other memoirs had covered one year and then 10 years and this was 30. So I said, no, that's, that's not going to happen. And uh, apparently he re pointed out, you, you say no every time. And then, then you get obsessed. And I got so obsessed with this one that it was about six years of waking up at three o'clock in the morning so that I could self hypnotize and relive memories so that I, I had all mm. the senses going. And uh, I don't think there, there's anybody dead in this book. In my other books, there were dead people. And so I had to, there was all I had was self-hypnosis. But this time it was just trying to encapsulate 30 years into a trajectory that made some kind of sense. Yeah, and, um, but there's some great stories in there as oh, well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a little Absol bit 
hard Absolutely. to follow, I think. Absolutely. There are too many stories. <laughs> Is it hard to follow? I, I found it, if I'm honest, I found it more difficult to get into yeah. at the beginning than than your other books. But that, do you know what? What I really love about you as an artist, full stop, is that you are, I, I'm going to just use the word real. You just keep everything real. And actually, yeah. what I really loved about the, 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 the fact that you made it hard work for me to get into this book <laughs> was the fact that with so many people, you read a book and then you, you start reading their next book and you think, actually, it's quite samey from the last book. But you've actually, with all three of your books, you have written them in a slightly different way. And I really enjoyed that. And I and and the fact that I got, you know, I opened this up and I thought, oh, this is going to be a continuation from the last book, just stylistically. And then it wasn't. Mm -hmm was great because it was it was challenging and when i spoke to fred last time i i, I interviewed fred we, we talked about music in that way as well in the mm -hmm. isn't it great when you you come across some music and it makes you challenged as a listener because you have to work at it and you have to in a nice way you have to work at it and you have to open your ears a little bit more and you have to open your senses a little bit more. I like um, that you appreciate that instead of wanting it poured down your throat. You know, I think that redefines what pop can mean in our culture. That it mm. doesn't have to mean stupid. <laughs> that we're not stupid. <laughs> it's yeah. popular, right? So let's make things that aren't stupid popular. And uh, if that's not going to be a breadth game, but a depth one, then you do have to sort of bring it. You have to bring yourself to a project so that you can't be lied to, for one, and that you play, you are a participant. And I think that's why these memoirs also disappoint. <laughs> I am the narrator. I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about feelings and self-expression and what I did. <laughs> it's like, I'm sort of invisible. I'm watching other people. And in this case, it's my four boys. Yeah. And that's something to watch. And it's not, uh, there's a sweetness because humans have hearts, but it, I don't think children are very silly the way we have sillified them. We've done the same thing to women culturally, obviously. Just tell them, ah, oh, you're about fashion. You're an idiot. <laughs> go and, and it disempowers them obviously i'm not sure exactly why because those are adult humans that live the same lives as anybody else and we're pretending they didn't with children it's pretty obvious that they're, they're terrifying they, they embody life and death at the same time mm. all of our terror and the gravity inherent in that i think is why it's difficult to get into this book because um as i was losing my oldest son and he was losing his mother uh, the maelstrom of that pain becomes so disorienting that it's very reflective of exactly what it was like, but nobody wants to be there. And that's why I resisted writing this book for so long because it had to begin there. But from there, it's a jumping off point into adventure, I suppose. Uh, I had to leave that pit of lava um, and then yeah. when it's time to tell the other stories, you're sort of cleaned out by it. But you got to stick with it. And uh, I think well, it, uh, the dummies yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> I mean, there was lots that resonated because I'm a father of five. Four, uh -huh. boy, four boys as well. Oh, um, yeah. Right. And then, then a single daughter who, you know obviously has to find her voice in amongst these four boys you can imagine what that's like uh -huh. um, I mean what it, yeah it is it's a it's a funny journey isn't it into parenthood and, and then seeing your your children become adults and and uh yeah you know, and find their yeah. own their influence can be felt before they're born. That was what was striking me about the book. And I don't, mm. I, I don't write books on purpose. Like I, from start to finish, I'm sort of following their 
assertion that they should exist. And if the book doesn't have that alive quality, I won't bring it about. Same with a song. I learned that from songs and children, really. And so they're, when their influence is felt, they're not, they're just sort of ghost babies. And then the ghost babies come to life. And my job was not to tell them what to think or do or what effect to have, but to just keep them safe. And that's why my role in the book was just narrator. Like, you really have no mm. impression of me <laughs> at all on this book. <laughs> In a in a way, um, they can they can be sort of mirrors that that shine stuff back at you as well, children. I mean, what what would you say you've learned most from your children? Everything. <laughs> oh, everything. <laughs> yeah, because they're little Buddhist bells of light. They're they're just going like now 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 now, and my kids are very quiet and very still. So they, I didn't have that chaos that some people talk about. They had to learn right away. You have to sit on an airplane. You have to be with adults in the dressing room. Mm. And they they were capable of playing, but there wasn't much chaos. Like we would walk by playgrounds where people where kids were yelling, and they would say, "Mom, what's the matter with them? You know, are they okay?" Because <laughs> they weren't. They didn't seem to have that desire to scream. No. And, uh, Does that partly come as well, though, from the fact that there's, I, I mean, it's my experience when you have a larger family and you've got, you know, you've got four. I mean, they're their own little club as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there, there's, there's this kind of, I don't, I really wouldn't know what it would be like for someone that just has one child. And because, for mine, they can they're really happy in their own little space. Yeah. Of, of you know, the family. And some people are just longing to get out there and you know socialize their kids with other people. Ours would just quite happily. It's good to hear because now that they're all in the world, they're coming back and saying, Mom, the world isn't the van. And <laughs> All I can say is, well, yeah, that's why the van. Did you not know that? I did that on purpose. And they said, well, yeah, but what do we do now? And it's not that that hadn't occurred to me, but I didn't have any choice, really. I wanted them to be appalled by what, <laughs> <laughs> what was I heard about the world. You know, it's, it's similar to war. It's like you have these kids out there, and they're looking at how murder makes heroes, and uh, here it's collecting money, and the diff slow murder and all the isms. It, it's not that the world is a dark place, it's that I want them to fight those darknesses and to be upset by them and not inured to them. Yeah. Let's talk about music for a minute. Okay. This this was the first album of yours, well, Frame Muses, that I brought. Oh, that's, and I, a good, and I, that's a good first record. I, I, that was, yeah, and I, I have to blame, I, I believe, Q Magazine for actually writing a nice review of that. Um, and me thinking, oh, actually, I'm going to go and try it. Wow, but, but, thank you. But, but that actually that actually changed the course of everything for me because um, yours was the first album that I listened to and then thought, I'm actually going to now learn guitar. Wow. <laughs> Because up and up until that point, up until that point, I just sung in a band. Um, but I thought, you know what? I'm I'm there's something on there I'm gonna actually pick up and play. And the first song that I learned of yours was Pearl. And what struck me straight away was I felt that the way that I played was really quite similar to you. And I couldn't actually, I couldn't find up until that point a reference point uh -huh. for playing <laughs> <laughs> that 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 made sense to me and then suddenly it made sense wow and I, that's and I, that's a nice compliment thank you but here's my question because you've you've talked over the years about um channeling if you like songs songs are there and you you channel them how how much on the technical side of playing 
have you actually had to persevere with? I started um, playing when I was nine and took about 10 years of classical guitar. Right. Before I realized that it was killing my sonic vocabulary mm. to focus on rules. It, it was no longer opening any doors. Uh, it was just shedding the voice that I had been born with, as, it, as anyone is born with. And I wanted to get back to the playing that would have um, occurred to me if I had never heard anyone else play or read sheet music. And that's essentially what throwing muses sounds like by the time we were releasing our recordings. Um, so did all of that classical stuff that you had learned, did it, did it actually help? Or did you actually, the, the muscle memory that you got from that, did that help? Or did you actually need to forget some of that? <laughs> I did need to forget some of that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it helped uh, to become facile with the piece of wood that is my instrument. It's yeah. fun, but it had become a hobby. It wasn't a passion. And songwriting, it has to be passionate uh, or you, you won't be raw. You'll be self-conscious and... Yeah, obviously that's what the music business <laughs> prefers, but it's not what I prefer. Yeah. And so when we started playing the out, it was it was a big party of um, like we were only fourteen, but for five years we played out, and it, people's um, most of the reviews said self-taught, meaning <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> And so Leslie and I, who had worked everything out, this is my first bass player. Yeah, yeah. Everything out for weeks and weeks and months and months, like to to just create this planet of music that was enchanting to us for every measure. Now, some people also said it sounds like they're playing different songs, but that's because it was so intricate. Mm. And uh, we were just entertaining ourselves. We didn't care what people thought, but it was only recently that I was like, Fuck you, so <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> yeah. But really, I believe self-taught is probably the way music will move forward. Like every Uber driver, you know, I meet says, "Oh, I'm not a real musician. I play because I love it." It's like that. Go, you be yeah. the musicians now. Fire all these professionals. It's a yeah. It's funny, isn't it? How how are people learning guitar these days? I mean, I guess you know what we didn't have back then is things like YouTube. Back in the day, um, you know, you did have you had music teachers, and you had books that taught you chords and things like that, or tab tabulation or whatever. But you didn't have this boundless amount of reference point on the internet that you could just go and oh i'll look at that again and you can yeah. and that's the other thing you can just go all oh, back i'll just watch that little bit I, I wonder i wonder whether it's great or not i mean i, my, I should do that when i can't figure out my own part <laughs> <laughs> well it's yeah i mean it, it's a it's a way of doing it i mean i the um the wonderful uh pianist Rick Wakeman actually said to me once in an interview, he he hid on stage for many, many years, part of Morning Has Broken that he did with Cat Stevens. Uh -huh. do, you, do you remember Morning Has Broken from Cat Stevens? Because Cat Stevens never paid him for that piece uh -huh. <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> so he, whenever he played it live, he put his hand over his other hand to play the little this little fill so that no touring musician with Cat Stevens could play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I like the idea that we could become more musically literate, meaning more in touch with our visceral response to sound with yes. just, just music and either the way it is, through genre, through time, uh, taking the dollar sign out of that equation. And we'd have a a populace that I would have assumed was more idiosyncratic and demanded more substance because the way they they sold music 
when it was just the big moguls doing it was very anti-music. They don't they don't want substance in music because then you can't control the populace. You can't tell them what they want. And they say, mm. you want fashion. You want what is hip right now. And your FOMO is going to keep you spending money on that because you'll be left behind. And uh, fashion is not music. Those are impo- opposed endeavors, obviously. <laughs> music is a timeless proposition. It's not always, but it should be. And then your style is just reflective of your own fingerprint. Yes, yes it moves through time, just as we move through time. But it's not going to be determined top down anymore because it's it's everywhere. Absolutely. Do you, do you think it's one of the things that's made you popular with I, I'm going to say popular you you may say well actually no I, um, I, I live quite modestly so I, <laughs> if I was really popular I'd have a bit, much bigger house right now <laughs> um, and I you know and I wouldn't have had to move around quite so much but when I say popular you have a group of people that support you and do you uh-huh. think that one of the reasons that you have a group of people that support you no matter what is because actually you've just done what you've wanted yeah it wasn't easy to do what i wanted they don't make it easy no Um, i mean the industry would hate you for that but yeah yeah but i i believe that i believe that the people that support you love you for that yeah there's a there's more love and less like in my world for sure um i I didn't have the option of doing what they tell you to do. To be a pop star for a, a woman is, uh, uh, we're all familiar with what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you look at every camera like you want to fuck it. You got to be dangerously underweight. So you look weak. You got to wear gobs of makeup. Uh, fashion, 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 flirt, flirt, flirt. I just didn't have the option. It's like, not. I'm a human. <laughs> I'm not one yeah. of them. And who did they did they yeah. try they tried that with you at some point? They, oh yeah. They, yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean they got rid of me because I wouldn't do it. And I wanted to leave. They 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 did worse than get rid of me. They buried me and they wouldn't let me leave. But what are you gonna do? Like it yeah, what would my don't... children think of me if I were someone that put money and attention before my convictions uh or if i put product before music i don't have that option so it wasn't easy but yeah that's how you earn love over like yeah and i love the fact that you've you've played with the way to to get your media out there in in relatively recent years as well the fact that you've released books with the cd in uh, etc i f- i just you know i talk quite a lot to some of the different musicians that come through here and especially some of the young ones about that as a as a process because i think a lot of young musicians are trying to look for a way to get in now and i and i think you've got to be i think you've got to be smart with your art you 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 agree with that you can't just necessarily see it as a you know you can't just use the mechanism that's that the industry gives you you've got to you've got to think beyond that mechanism yeah i mean they might want to this is not the win (laughs) (laughs) win would be sucking (laughs) make you know going after shallow fans by playing shallow i can't even call it music there's no such thing as bad music it's either music or it's not music is it's who it's made by it's who it's made by it's what the conviction is behind it yeah maybe yeah but it's there's no planned obsolescence in the substantive so whereas i would like a long sustainable career in the corner without anybody looking at me um, the business itself wants um, just an image and an inflammatory fan response, and then to move on. You know, that's that's what top-down phenomenon is. And popular culture could be more reflective of our culture. 
I don't know. I don't live in your country, but in America, we're sort of the entertainment industry country. And yet we have an American culture. It's not reflected in our popular culture. It's popular culture is determined by an industry, a fashion industry, essentially. So it's a business like any other one. And that economy is just not reflective of our culture, which America is amazing. It's a, it's a melting pot. It's got a lot of trouble. <laughs> but, so. I mean, what, what, what I see, what I see across everything, not, not just in the arts, now but i think across business as well and i think um I don't want to linger on the, the the covid pandemic thing but actually i think what the pandemic has done has it's opened a lot of people's eyes to what is important in life that's that's a that's a you know a, a given really and i think a lot of people are beginning to to kind of rebel in a way against the system you know, yeah, we have a yeah. we have a thing we have thing now in business. We've just been talking about it in a meeting before I came here um, about the Great Resignation. A lot of people are just ditching their jobs. High mm -hmm. up people just ditching their jobs and going. Do you know what? No, I don't. I, you know, the money and the you know making me work ninety five hours a week um, and selling my soul to the system. I, I, do you know what? I've realised there's more to life than this. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I just, you know, I love the fact that for every over here, every crass radio station that plays exactly the same as the, <laughs> this other radio station, you know, and they broadcast uh, the same thing every lunchtime across the network. And there's a list of six songs that you hear on repeat over and over again. For every one of those, there's a, a little radio station that is really just playing what they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Which is, that's the humanity inherent in all of this. And you you can't be rigid in your impressions and say, well, these are the rules. These are the people that um, that are lying. These are the people telling the truth, because that's a superficial valuation, too. Even just to nail somebody as a liar or a genius is not going to there's no follow through in your impression that way. That's that's where you get racism and sexism and there's no superficial valuation that's going to move through time reliably so you just keep looking for the humanity and you can find it anywhere it's just the spinning out of ego and economy is sort of creates a, a scary hurricane of downward effect that that can hurt for sure yeah. particularly the people that used to live off the low-hanging fruit um from independent musicians to the working poor you lose real important soldiers uh, but you can't see power as what's taking up space and being cruel that which is historically how we view power and um, you parse the elements of every ism and it comes down to that misapprehension so you don't you don't want to go there but it's good to look out and see what people with enthusiasm are doing. You can I'll rail against the music business till the cows come home, but there's great radio. There are great record companies. There are great photographers and engineers and even musicians, even though you've never heard of any of the great ones. <laughs> and, and just let me say for anyone that um, perhaps hasn't even heard your music um, or doesn't even know you as a, as a musician or, a, or a, an author or whatever, Regardless of that, if, if you want good uh, social political commentary <laughs> in terms of what's going on, please do follow Kristen on Twitter. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, I must say that the whole way through the whole Trump, um, whatever, what, what do you call that? Um, mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that whole period, I mean, your, your, your Twitter comments were, were both uh politically correct um but also quite inspiring and 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 very humorous at times which was wonderful um oh thank so, you, you, know, you know, no, they, no, they targeted no. me and my son initially the trump people as a very leftist musician and I, i'm so humanist you know <laughs> i was not 
I was not getting into the virtue signaling and the shaming and uh, I wasn't even taking sides, so to speak, because I find that to be you know, disingenuous. And But they they chased me and threatened me. You know? <laughs> and I had other musician friends um, experience the same thing. And I said, what, what do you do? And they, they said, don't trust the cops. You know, hate everybody. <laughs> amplify, amplify. I was like, ah, <laughs> so you mean you're enjoying this. I mean, how do I find the humanity here? How do I circumvent this inflammatory response? Not how do I make it noisier than it already is? No, well, no, absolutely. Um, but there's it, lots of... it was interesting. They were interesting it, people. Oh, and I'm not... I'm not calling them on anything that I wouldn't call our virtue signalers on. <laughs> well, we had we had fun over here watching it all unfold, and um, <laughs> when I say when I say fun, we, we did mock, we did mock, um, and that's, especially the whole bleach thing. I mean, what? Um, you know, the what? The, the, the whole bleach thing. That that whole scene where yeah. with with Trump in the white house looking at his uh scientific aid or whatever and 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 seriously asking the question about whether it might be a good idea to inject bleach was just yeah, I, i'm sort of intrigued i majored in immunology and i have no idea that our populace on both sides were, were uh so uninformed as to symptomatic response <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still a little bit shocked. But I, you know, I don't have to get into it. But well, we we it's a virus, and we we're mammals, and this yeah. isn't you know binge watching Netflix isn't quarantine. <laughs> like, we we right, just right. thought we just thought we were watching a, an episode of Monty Python at the time. That's that's <laughs> that's, that's really what was going on. Um, lots of people watching, lots of people commenting. Um, Scott just reminds us that you also do the best morning photos on twitter the best well. <laughs> morning oh. photos oh. <laughs> which, which i think is great i mean it, it it's you know at the end of the day first thing in the morning what else should you do than yeah. just, just the same morning to each other right yeah and you're you're looking at your small life which i mean not to get too heavy-handed but they can't disempower you if you don't empower yourself by the superficial you you have a fingerprint you are unique and yet to decide that you are your race your gender blah blah blah, blah your class uh the amount of attention you get the amount of money you have that, that is not impact that and that is not where your selfhood comes from it's it's your small life if you are baffled by all the information coming in realize that it has been curated can curate your own look look down, look at your life, turn your senses on, look at what is around you. It's really beautiful. And then, then you begin to share and you, all the people who follow me are also sending me morning pictures. Like, look at this beauty. <laughs> and what a way to start the day to be going like, look at this beauty. And it's all small and goofy. And it isn't, it's not even like, you know, goddamn sunrises and shit. <laughs> it's not like something that you didn't know was beautiful. It's a freaking mud puddle. <laughs> Look how pretty it is. Right yeah. There. <laughs> it can be a fire hydrant, can't it, or something, you know? Uh -huh. it, uh, yeah, that's it. You know, I love it. No, I absolutely love it. Um, oh, especially, I mean, I think sometimes you really capture New Orleans, for example. I think you really capture oh, the, spirit, yeah. the spirit of New Orleans just with, you know, you, you just capture the people that are there and, and the things that are going on that it's everyday it's everyday life. It gets, yeah, um, and rings. people who have no input from news or social media or uh, popular culture even, like, most of them are in their own culture. You, New Orleans is the only way I know uh, how to get off this planet. You know, it's not in America <laughs> and it's not on Earth. <laughs> and yet it's full, it's got this baked in richness that isn't always easy or comfortable. But culturally, it's allowed for. You're not failing because you're not participating. There is no winning or losing. You're just living your life. And so I find it um, it's important to reorient that way. 
And uh, that's the only place I can find beauty right now is when people have already focused on their own lives. And so the noise, it just isn't there. Yeah. Odessa says, um, I'm going to follow you now. How marvelous. There you go. That's what it's like. Join, the, <laughs> jo jo join in the fun. Join the crowd. Join the early morning. Say hello to everybody It's a else. nice group. <laughs> it's a really it, nice it, group of people. It's, it's a lovely group of people. Isn't it? And, <laughs> and, and actually, they're all quite intelligent. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, that's that's the thing. Not saying that there's anything wrong with people not being intelligent. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. But um, you know, maybe just maybe that there's a group of people that have a civil intelligence, which there you which, go. It, it's who, defining who, intelligence definitely. exactly that it congregate not, together. It's not um information it's, that's it's not a mensa it's not a mensa score. That. Yeah, What's it's that? not a mensa. It's not a mensa score. It's not how well you did on an IQ test. It's a civil <laughs> yeah. intelligence. Oh, some of the smartest people I know are uh, <laughs> they're not geniuses. <laughs> no. So, it, it, in terms of in terms of what you've been working on, um, you, you obviously you've, you 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 finished the book. The book the the book was out last year. That the book was fantastic. Um, you had uh, you had um, the solo album out last year was it last year as well that, that I, I lose track i lose track of years now but we you that. so i guess that was oh right, two years right ago two years ago pandemic. two years ago i got the t-shirt i should remember <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I came to see you in exeter twice so Aww, you thank you um no that was that was lovely uh, so you, you've got two albums on the go at the moment is that right yeah 50 foot wave is called black pearl which is the neighborhood in new orleans where the songs were written and that's uh that's in and pressed and nice. ready to go i think the announce is very soon when you when you say <laughs> press what you actually managed to get hold of some vinyl ah i know that's crazy <laughs> huh it's like everything's wacky now <laughs> but ha hang on, hang on. Your name begins with a K, not an A. How did you manage to get hold of vinyl? <laughs> <laughs> I know some what? guys. Well, okay. <laughs> I was uh, just wondering because you're neither you're neither Adele nor Abba, so I just wondered how you managed it. That's all. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, now a uh, solo record. Uh, so I'm cool. in New England right now recording. Um, I'm still kind of doing follow-up book stuff, but I won't do a brick and mortar book tour until the uh, paperback comes out. Everything got canceled. I had three, three tours canceled and, you know, umpteen book tours canceled. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just been dreadful. I mean, it, it's, it's been nice for people to get back out playing though, hasn't it? I mean, it's. Yeah, it's we just... did a great tour. Uh, we just got back and uh, it was, we had standing ovations everywhere. And I, I don't think that was us. I think it's people were just well, an outpouring, an outpouring of need, a sort of, you know, thank goodness we're bloody here now. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, it was lovely, you know, and yeah. uh, it, I think that's been the same. Too. I think that's been pretty much the same everywhere, actually. I mean, I went to see a, a, a few bands in London not so long ago, and, and there was just this real sense of, oh, you know, thank goodness, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank yeah. goodness. Yeah, I can. I'm standing in front of a band. It, it, it could almost have been any band. I suppose, but it, <laughs> yeah, it, that was the feeling I got. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we're pretty good, but we're not standing on vision. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just think people have missed that, that, you know, uh, interaction with people so, so much. And yeah, um, there's a group high is a real thing. You know, when it's time to share, you know it and to have that blocked is a frustration. I'm not a stage performer, really. I only offer focus, so I, I don't really know where I am. I do the same thing in front of a quarter of a million people as I do in front of two, but uh, 
it is still an offering. The music, if it's publishable, it's an event that is for others, not for mm -hmm. me. And it was sad to have a throwing music record come out and that's it. It's like every every tour was canceled one after another. Still work, yeah. you know. I'm lucky that we can record and then it becomes somebody else's soundtrack. That's effective. But to really back it up with your body in a room and know that the group high is also about focus. Yeah, because we don't have like we don't we don't have fans. <laughs> we have people that show up because they like music and, and they're like yeah. oh, we play music. And to not be able to do that and make sure that we remember what it is that we're about it's just sort of like the record uh it's i couldn't i couldn't do right by it you mm. know? So you, you, you say that you don't you don't have fans i mean well you you have people that uh appreciate what it, what it is that you yeah, do yeah 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 we have and, listeners <laughs> yeah you have listeners and but i'll tell you what you do also have and i i've only really experienced this with you and one other band which is that you have a group of people that listen to you as well and I, I think it must be something to do with the way that you are with the, your art um, who will turn to each other in a room not knowing each other and connect oh because, yes because whenever I've been to see you I've I've made new friends and, That's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I just think it's so sad, isn't it? Because I'm sure that a lot of people they have they they have, a, you know, a, thousands of people in a room, and everyone comes in to see them, and they do their thing. Yeah, and they leave, and all of those people leave, and they, you know, and they they're in their own little bubble, probably yeah. in love with the band or whatever. But actually, what I think is that when people come to see you, they're actually in love with the community and they're in yes. love with the experience. And you know, it's you read the book, so you know what yeah. that publicist said to me your, <laughs> your career is a mess, you have no demographic. This, this oh, sh dear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's no like is it straight white women you play for is it young people is it you know so i'm mortified hu like, humans this is, this is humans, humans. <laughs> what's that humans maybe yeah exactly and uh she's like i don't know what publications to go after you and like, my hands are tied you have to limit your audience to one <laughs> like age race and like it's just it's nightmarish what they how they view the populace. And so, yeah, to, to circumvent that somehow, yeah, I don't know how we did it, but it's even on Twitter, they talk to each other. They're making connections because they feel like-minded in spite of any superficial valuations. I keep saying it because it's not the way to go. Obviously, it... their fingerprints are not the same. So what do they have in common? Their humanity. Yeah. And that's how people should get on in life. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't matter how old you are, or you yeah. know, um, where you we come from. We humanize when we decide we know what's at someone's essence by what's on the outside. And obviously, I thought we knew that. Yeah, no, it's true. It doesn't make money. And, and, the only, <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, the only other time that that tends to happen is through um, when something bad has happened. And, yeah. and you know and then people suddenly come together but how quickly they forget normally and that's why i think it's really important to hold on to things that are are true you yeah. know and are, are very real because i think then you actually grow, grow a community that will stick together that little bit longer i that's mean true. it's look at look at what happened in uh you know in the pandemic the the first in the first lockdown, in the first few weeks, or whatever, we had a, a massive outpouring of community and and you know, let's we're all in this together. Let's kind of I don't know whether it was quite the same there, but certainly here, you know, we had people out clapping every week for the NHS. We had, you know, people coming together, and then slowly as people get back on with their lives, 
they kind of forget that and they kind yeah. of and actually we saw kind of a reverse of that where it's actually you know i hate you because you've got a vaccine i hate you know i hate you because you haven't got a vaccine what, I know. what a, do right? you know the Dr. Seuss book, Star Billy Speeches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a mask is no star, and we hate you if you don't have one. And but <laughs> short of alien overlord, this is a really nice chance for us to pull together as humans. And it was for a second, but ego is quick. It's not smart, but it's quick. And if there is a chance to love to hate, it will take it to make itself bigger and it will bring people into its fold and you just keep aligning with soul over ego you you escape that but you know not always entirely <laughs> i'm not going to hold you to any dates all right because that that would be business-like and horrible um but when, when <laughs> and we don't I mean, you and i don't survive in that universe but when when would you like therefore to see um the, the music that you've done released Is to see what when would you like the two projects to be released when would you like to see uh, uh your your two uh, albums released the, i have some 50 foot wave uh re-releases or technically re-releases even though we've never had a record company before which is another interesting take on rigidity that i had said when i started 50 foot wave we're going to break every rule to play a kind of mastermind and see which pieces fall into place. Let's give so it away. Be... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so no money. You know, we give the music away. Everybody Ca volunteers cashless. their time. And uh, we uh, we don't even sell product. No record companies. No publicity. Blah, blah, blah. And we were, you know, functioning entity as long as we could stay on the road and we did record engineers volunteered their time and uh we did i think two million downloads of some release free music maybe probably <laughs> and uh billboard got all upset <laughs> <laughs> who are you <laughs> you have to like have catalog numbers and you got to fill out all these forms and you have to send us your records and all this and no we don't you don't give a shit about us i promise <laughs> and they're like two million downloads you can't do this and uh i was like it doesn't matter right it's just music and then they found out we didn't charge and they were like oh phew it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> like i knew it you motherfuckers you're counting money you're not counting anything else and they're like oh yeah yeah we're counting money <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't like we dropped the record out of helicopters onto people. They, 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 were, they, they were thinking, we owe her. What do we, <laughs> what do we owe her? <laughs> but, you know, I was just waiting for the paradigm to shift. It took a couple of decades. I guess I left Warner Brothers like 25 yeah. years ago, something like that. Um, and, uh, it, and it did. There, there are record companies who are functioning and still offer me the opportunity to not have to earmark listener support funds uh, for production, distribution, promotion. The record companies handle that. And since I'm not looking to profit <laughs> necessarily, I'm just looking for teammates to get music out there. Yeah. They are now releasing some 50 foot wave records like Power and Light, which is 30 minutes of um, music that is uncategorizable in the industry so nobody can carry it they can't stream it <laughs> and then bath white which is um probably right after power and light anyway the fire records is putting those out before yeah. the new release i think or maybe I was gonna, I was anyway, say, three 50 foot wave releases <laughs> we'll do that Let, so people can get those i, I was going to say you're on fire now <laughs> <laughs> I tried making a joke. Nobody ever gets it. Yeah. <laughs> it's you've you've always been on fire, but, but, but you finally are on fire, which is <laughs> which is which is great. <laughs> uh, least, and, it, and I feel it feels like a right place for you to be at the moment. Yeah, yeah, 
definitely feels yeah. like the right place. They to were be. saying it, it's not because you're a heritage artist. We think you're cool right now. And I was like, I, I have absolutely no self concept <laughs> when it comes to that. Stuff. As long as I can keep recording, it, and, you know. If you stuff. say I'm cool, I'm cool. <laughs> that's, that's the best way. Oh, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Oh, uh, yeah, it's so nice that we finally pulled it off. Sorry yeah. for the difficulty. Hey. As I said, look, we said at the beginning, it's it's a weird it's a weird world, isn't it? At the moment, um, you know, and it, it's difficult to know whether you're coming or going, going or coming. But, but that's, um, that's good. I like that. I think we should. Um, yeah, we should keep it messy. We should keep mixing it up. Absolutely. But looking at the hundreds of comments that, that have come in down, down the side of this, um, you've got you've got a load of people that continue to love you uh, and, and and love what you do and so uh, just keep doing it all right yeah please okay, okay. otherwise <laughs> otherwise i'm coming to get you <laughs> and, and the only <laughs> other thing i want to know is um because he's not he's, he's not he's not told me recently did did um fred actually ever manage to perfect that guitar sound that he was working on that it was going to be all over his new album do you ah, know what guitar sound is that I, it, well, when I spoke to him last, he said this new album is going to have this particular guitar sound that I'm he's working on all over it. Ah, yeah. Do you want my secret? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baritone, super baritone, but any baritone really. And yeah. um, you have to drown a, an electro harmonic fuzz wah, like, uh, literally dunk it in water. Really? What, until it cracks. Yeah. I, yeah, it was my it favorite is. pedal, and I it was rescued from a flood by my neighbors uh, just post Katrina. Uh, they they saved only family photos, a couple of guitars, and this my favorite pedal. And um, I it lasted for a few years, and uh, it's it's on a couple of records, but it died, and then I. I never replaced it. Some friend got, got it off of eBay, and I'm like, it sounds like a beer commercial. It's like, <laughs> like was I making it up? Did I used to be really lame? And uh, now it's because they have to drown it. Uh, you know, don't, <laughs> you've got a whole load of in people in there. It. If it's plugged in, don't get in the tub with it. But you've got a whole load of people in the comments going amazing now. P please. <laughs> I feel yeah. I feel we all almost need to put a, a triangle on this with a warning. Please don't necessarily go <laughs> and put well, your uh, guitar pedals in water. Yeah, off, I, I off have I have had such such wicked bad shocks in in my life. You know, playing festivals during rainstorms and stuff like that. Yeah. I had my lips blown off in France. <laughs> it was like blood everywhere. Well, off the off the um, end of the mic. What's that? Off the end of the microphone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's lightning not, it's strike. It's not fun. It's not fun getting an electric shock through the microphone. No, no. So don't get in the tub with the pedal. <laughs> <laughs> but now that we're sharing secrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unless unless you want a really really interesting 2022, you know, and then and then you know. Then you uh, can goddamn write yourself a book. It's like it'll be yeah. worth it. Yeah, absolutely. This, the day I tried what Kirsten told me. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. Thank you, sweetheart. Kirsten, for, for joining me today. It's It's been an absolute pleasure, as I said. And um, let's do it again sometime. Let's do it you again know. sometime. Let's, let's, not, let's not leave it a, a, a decade or so before we do it No, again. no, no. I'm going to oh, die God. soon, probably, right? It's like, it's been so fucking long. Oh. You're not going to die soon. You, you, you. We're all going to die soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we are, but but you're quite fit. You, you, you do. You know, you yeah. jump in water and stuff. You right. swim. Well, I'll in water. see you here tomorrow then. We yeah, talk yeah. At lunchtime. Yeah, absolutely. See you later, Bye, baby. I have a have a lovely time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Graham. Take care. Bye. -bye.